Direct News TV August 4, 2023 Russia-Ukraine War Updates, Moscow Port Attack Successful, Says Kiev In war-torn Ukraine, what is media freedom worth? Media organizations in Ukraine are urging the government to give them more freedom to report on the war. Since the invasion, the government has taken control of most media channels and now broadcast only the official version of the war, 24 hours a day, in what is known as the United News Marathon. Sedgul Muzaeva, editor-in-chief of Ukrainska Pravda, says the marathon should end and journalists should be free to hold their government accountable, particularly during wartime. Former Ukrainian leader says war not a Hollywood film, thanks Saudi Arabia. The former Ukrainian president, Petro Poroshenko, told Al Jazeera that the counteroffensive is not a Hollywood movie. Every success of the Ukrainian army is a great effort, a great sacrifice of Ukrainian soldiers, and we understand what it means for the whole world. We are stopping the aggressor, we do not give the ability of Russia to attack freedom and democracy in the whole world, Poroshenko said. The former leader thanked Kiev's allies for their support during the 18-month war. Ahead of a peace initiative hosted by Saudi Arabia this weekend, Poroshenko thanked the government for helping create a framework for peace negotiations. The only precondition for peace negotiations is to restore the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine's territory in the internationally recognized border, very clear, he said. Kremlin critic Navalny sentenced to an extra 19 years in jail. Jailed Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny was sentenced to an additional 19 years in a case that he and his supporters said had been increased to keep him behind bars and out of politics for even longer. U.S. Republican candidate visits Ukraine. U.S. Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie has visited Ukraine, met with Zelensky and emphasized Washington's support for Kiev. The former New Jersey governor met with Zelensky at the presidential palace in Kiev after visiting a mass grave in Bucha and touring the damage in Ipran outside the capital. Ukraine has accused Russia of committing atrocities in Bucha after Kiev's forces recaptured the town last year. Christie also toured a child protection center in Kiev. His message during the visit was clear, the U.S. supports and should continue to support Ukraine. Christie, a one-time ally of former President Donald Trump, is challenging him for a second time for their party's 2024 presidential nomination, presenting a sharp contrast with Trump on Ukraine. Ukrainian official says attack on port successful. A Ukrainian official says the drone attack on a Russian landing ship at the Novorossiysk naval base in southern Russia has been successful. The French news agency AFP cited a Ukrainian security source as saying the Olenogorsky Gornyak landing ship was the target of the strike. No explosives found at Zaporizhia plant, IAEA. The UN nuclear watchdog found no explosives at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant after being granted access after months of requests. Last month, Russia and Ukraine traded accusations of planning to stage an attack on Europe's biggest nuclear power plant. IAEA, experts have observed no mines or explosives on the rooftops of Unit 3 and Unit 4 reactor buildings and the turbine halls, after having been given access yesterday afternoon, the International Atomic Energy Agency said. The watchdog said while there were no signs of explosives in the areas it had been able to visit, there were mines outside the perimeter that appeared to pose no danger to the plant's safety. Chinese Special Envoy to Attend Saudi Arabia Talks Chinese Special Envoy for Eurasian Affairs Li Hui will visit Jeddah for talks on a Ukraine peace settlement, the foreign ministry said. China is willing to work with the international community to continue to play a constructive role in promoting a political solution to the crisis in Ukraine, Wang Wenbin, a spokesperson at the Chinese ministry, said in a statement. China has remained neutral in the conflict and maintains its close ties to Russia. Lithuania declares as threats more than 1,000 Russians, Belarusians. Lithuania declares more than 1,000 citizens of Russia and Belarus living in the country to be threats to national security. The move comes after the government asked the Russians and Belarusians to answer a questionnaire with questions about their views on Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the status of Crimea.
The Migration Department said that it had established that 1,164 people posed a threat to national security, 910 of those were Belarusian citizens while 254 were Russian. How people answered the questionnaire was taken into consideration in deciding whether to grant or deny residence, according to the department. More than 58,000 Belarusians and 16,000 Russians currently reside in Lithuania. Kiev and allies hope to rally support in Saudi Arabia meeting. Ukraine and its allies aim to rally international support during a peace summit in Saudi Arabia this weekend. The meeting in Jeddah of national security advisors and other senior officials from about 40 countries is expected to agree on fundamental principles for a future peace settlement to end Russia's war in Ukraine. Russia was not invited to attend the meeting, but the Kremlin said it would monitor the discussions. On Wednesday, Zelensky said he hoped the initiative will lead to a peace summit of international leaders this autumn to endorse the principles based on his 10-point peace formula. Zelensky's peace plan calls for the withdrawal of Russian troops and the restoration of its borders. But Ukrainian, Russian and international officials say there is no prospect of direct peace talks between the warring countries at the moment. Polls divided on threat of Wagner Group in Belarus. Since the Wagner Group arrived in Belarus, Polish leaders have taken significant security steps after calling the move extremely dangerous. But polls remain divided on the issue and whether the proximity of the Russian fighters poses a threat. Kremlin says Poland's comments on Wagner Group are odd. The Kremlin has said Poland's statement on Wagner forces in Belarus is odd, as Warsaw warns that the mercenary group is seeking to unsettle NATO's eastern flank. Spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said, There are a lot of oddities, in general, the Poles are prone to provoking the situation, escalating tension. This line is not new and has only been progressing in recent years. Indeed, the fighters of this group are on the territory of Belarus within the framework of existing agreements. Near the border, not near, their, border, this is the territory of Belarus, Belarus is a sovereign state. Russia says it needs actions not promises from US. Russia says it needs actions, not promises, from the United States to meet the conditions it has set to return to the Black Sea Grain Deal. Moscow quit the deal on July 17 after saying not enough had been done to remove obstacles to its exports of food and fertilizer. If they want to contribute to fulfilling the part of the grain deal that is due to Russia, the Americans must fulfill it, not promise that they will think about it, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov told reporters. As soon as this is done, this deal will immediately be renewed. The Kremlin's comments come after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told reporters on Thursday that Washington would do whatever is necessary to ensure the safety of food exports if Russia returns to the deal. Ukraine accuses Russia of planning false flag attack in Belarus. Ukraine has accused Russia of preparing to stage a false flag attack at the Moser oil refinery in Belarus to blame Ukrainian saboteurs in an effort to draw Belarus into the war. In a statement, the Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, said its allegations were based on information from several sources, including a captured Russian serviceman. Several African leaders and Putin published joint statement. The Kremlin has published a joint statement with the Russian President Vladimir Putin and the leaders of several African countries participating in a peace mission to end the war, the TASS news agency reported. In the statement, the leaders pointed out the progress made on proposals in their first meeting on June 17 on humanitarian issues, including children in war zones and prisoner exchanges. The statement added that, the leaders called for concrete steps to remove barriers to Russian grain and fertilizer exports, allowing full implementation of the grain deal to resume. They also called on the UN to take the necessary measures to release 200,000 tons of Russian fertilizers blocked in the seaports of the European Union for immediate and free delivery to African countries. Putin met with members of the African Peace Mission at the end of July on the sidelines of the Russia-Africa summit. A tax on ports is likely attempt to stop international trade, UK. The British Defence Ministry said Russia's attacks on Ukrainian grain ports in the past few weeks are likely an attempt to stop international trading via the ports.
In the ministry's daily intelligence update, it found that OWA UAVs have struck targets as close as 200 meters from the Romanian border, suggesting that Russia has evolved its risk appetite for conducting strikes near NATO territory. There is a realistic possibility that Russia is using OWA UAVs to strike this area in the belief they are less likely to risk escalation than cruise missiles, Russia likely considers them as acceptably accurate, and they have much smaller warheads than cruise missiles. My name is Kingsley. Please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be the first to be notified whenever we post you won't regret it.